recent technological advancements uh, in microchip technology developed by a colleague in the University of Zurich, Alex, uh, Alexei Vysotsky, has allowed us to actually record brain activity and sleep-related brain activity in animals in the wild. And this is important for two reasons. One, uh, we did the first study of an animal sleeping in, a, in the wild. In this case, it was a sloth. And we found that sloths are not so slothful after <laughs> all. Uh, people previously thought they slept 16 hours a day. Some people said 20 hours a day. But when we recorded their brain activity in the wild, we found they only slept nine and a half hours a day, over six hours less than captive sloths. So that finding in and of itself is important because it calls into question you know, the, the nature of sleep that we're recording in captivity or in, in the laboratory, at least in terms of how long an animal there sleeps. There might not be too much to do in the lab, so yeah, might not get sleep. We don't exactly know the reason for the, this difference, mm -hmm. and I think it can even go the other way, that some animals... Uh, might be particularly fearful in the laboratory and sleep less than they do in the wild. Hmm. Um, but it could be differences and they don't have to forage, they don't have, uh, some animals uh, may feel safe in the lab and some may feel uh, threatened. So I think it can go in each direction. But, but, to, but to study things in the wild, I mean, you have to take all this equipment that you, it's easy to use in the lab and you've got to take it outside and to some pretty extreme places. Yeah, it, it, it is tricky. Um, our, our laboratory becomes a, a tent on a remote island or uh, uh, the back of a pickup truck in, in, in the, the rainforest in Panama. Um, but the birds that we're really interested in studying now do some extraordinary things. Um, there are several species that you'll see in this uh, image uh, that engage in periods of continuous activity lasting days, weeks, months, maybe even longer. Um, there's a bird in the upper left corner, the bar-tailed godwit. It's been shown that they fly nonstop for eight days from Alaska to New Zealand, where they spend the winter. And we actually have a, a map, I believe. Yeah. Why and there, there's take a, a look at that map. And, and this is showing a, a, a GPS track. They put a device on these birds that could tell exactly where they were. And you can see uh, Alaska up on the top of the globe, and they start there and they fly all the way to New Zealand without stopping at all. And then they make comparable long flights on the way back going via China in this case. Um, so this raises the question, well, how do they get their sleep? In every other animal, sleep seems to be a daily phenomenon and very important, as, as, as we all know and as I know, being uh, quite jet-lagged today. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happens if you try to keep a bird awake for a long time? I mean, d does it just say, please leave me alone, I need sleep? I mean... Yeah, and, and we've actually recently shown with pigeons that if you uh, take away just their normal daytime napping, uh, that they become very sleepy, and when we let them sleep and record their brain activity, they, they sleep much more deeply. So the brainwave patterns respond just like they do in humans. And also, We've shown that if you stimulate one part of the brain, in this case, we, we had birds watch David Attenborough's The Life of Birds <laughs> um, on TV uh, uh, with Works. just one eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair. <laughs> um, we just covered one eye and showed them the show. And uh, the part of the brain connected to that I that watched the TV slept much more deeply. So just like I had mentioned in humans, the sleep seems to be regulated in the bird brain dependent on how different regions were used. 